Good morning. So glad to see all of you here today to uh, celebrate this great day. What is today? It's Sunday, I know, and we, uh, we always go to church on Sunday. I, uh, I've said this before, it's, it's uh, old, but it's absolutely true that I attended church my whole life because I have a drug problem. My mother drugged me there, my dad drugged me there, my... <laughs> Grandmother certainly drugged me there, and, uh, but my mother drugged me there, and she was a wonderful example of a woman of faith, uh, not just coming to sit in the pews, but she was an organist and involved in all the activities of the church. If there was a bingo game, she brought a casserole, and so <laughs> there was never uh, a time that we were not heavily involved in our church, and so I have tremendous memories of my mom, and many of them are tied to uh, the church. But uh, today is Mother's Day, and so all I can say is Happy Mother's Day. How many of you had a mother? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we all did, and uh, what a what a a thrill it is to be able to uh, to, to to remember them today and honor them and honor mother current mothers, uh, those that are in the midst of it right now. It's uh, it's tough. I I was talking to uh, some parents who were considering divorce and they couldn't and I, I couldn't couldn't divorce and I said uh, you know why and he says well because the kids and I said you, you know stand together for the kids isn't always the best thing and uh, the, the woman said you know you don't understand I don't want them and neither does he so <laughs> uh, being a being a mother is not always not always an easy thing we have a couple of announcements in the bulletin I'd like for you to take special notice of. One is our comfort care, just starting up throughout the summer, an opportunity to help people uh, when they're having difficulty and preparing food for them and um, providing um, meals and such. PBJ is looking for volunteers, and what really they're looking for is just go, just go with them and see what it is they do. That, it's as simple as that. You don't have to do anything more than just ride in the car and uh, see what it is, where they go, who it is that they're helping, and how they do it. And uh, I think you would be very uh, touched by it. It's a wonderful ministry uh, of our church. Um, Holy Spirit Group Summer Bible Study is just cooking along, getting ready to meet uh, on June the 7th and August 2nd and 9th. You'll notice the uh, information here in the bulletin. They need you to sign up so they can get enough of the Bible study material for you. So please be aware of that. Read that over. Um, and I believe that's all the announcements I need to make right now. Am I missing anything? Nope. Well, then again, happy Mother's Day. Let's uh, turn our thoughts and hearts over to God and give thanks for so many wonderful things. And now let us begin our time of worship.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sing a new song to the Lord our God, a song resounding to the ends of the earth. A song of mirth and gladness, a song of life and peace. A song of love and victory, a song of faith and power. Let your voices roar with the seas, clap hands with the floods and shout to the hills. For our blind eyes are opened and our deaf ears unstopped and our muted tongues have found their joy-filled song. Let us worship God. Now gather together as the people of God, let us confess what we believe using the great ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick in the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us take a moment to greet each other in the name of Christ. much. Let's uh, find our seats. Thank you.
you so much. Well, this puts us into a very good mood to uh, hear the words of Jesus as he prays for his disciples. I mean, we have many examples of prayer in the Bible, but this is one of the very best. So we begin in uh, John's Gospel, uh, the 17th uh, verse with the sixth, a uh, 17th chapter with the sixth verse. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given to me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that all that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture could be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the word of the Lord. Let's turn to God for a moment, a silent prayer. Amen. Two little kids came to their mom on Mother's Day, and they had a huge house plant. It was beautiful. And they gave it to her, and the oldest one said, Sorry, Mom, we really wanted to get you flowers instead of this big plant. But when we went to the florist store, all they had were, that had flowers had something on there that said, Rest in Peace. And we wanted to get that for you because we knew that you were always looking for rest and peace. But we got this house plan for you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, folks. Happy Mother's Day. If it applies to you, according to the Census Bureau, that is a lot of you. In the recent years, the value of shipments of Mother's Day cards. Now, this is, you know, actual cards, not just emails and things like that. But we actually have to buy a card. Went from $80 million to $147 million spent on cards. And you can pre presume there'll be just as much of a jump each year as, as time goes on. I mean, the Americans uh, give mom a day off today, supposedly, from the kitchen. A lot of Mother's Day humor, though. Some definitions you parents might recognize. Definition of airplane is what mom impersonates to get a one-year-old to eat strained beets. <laughs> oh, tell me you've never done it. Alien, what mom would suspect had invaded her house if she found their six-year-old cleaning them up after themselves. Or apple, a nutritious lunchtime dessert with which children can trade for a cupcake. <laughs> a baby, number one, dad when he gets a cold. Or two, mom's youngest child, even if he's 42. <laughs> because mom's reason for, well, just about everything, it can't be explained. Carpool, complicated system of transportation where mom always winds up going the furthest with the biggest bunch of kids who've had the most sugar. <laughs> oh yeah, China, legendary nation re reportedly populated by children who love leftover vegetables. 
eat your vegetables, the children starving. And oh, tell me you never heard that either. Yeah. <laughs> Cook, the act of preparing food for consumption, or mom's other name. Couch potato, what mom finds under the sofa after the kids have gone to bed. Indeed, Mother's Day. It's exciting. The first call for Mother's Day, the first one, and this is, this is uh, interesting information, came uh, in this country in, 19, in the 1870s as an effort to rally women to work for peace in the world. The person who was pushing it, Julia Ward Howe, does that ring a bell with anybody? What did she write? The Battle Hymn of the Republic. That's right. She wrote that. She initiated the idea after her experience tending the wounded during the war between the states, she started a crusade uh, to institute such an event. The last Mother's Day of that kind was June 1, 1912, where the printed invitations noted that, quote, this festival is a time for women and children to come together to speak, sing, and pray for those things that make for peace. Thirty years later, um, in establishing it, uh, 30 years earlier, in establishing the observance, she had written this. We will not have great questions decided by irrelevant agencies. Our husbands shall not come to us reeking with carnage for caresses and applause. Our sons shall not be taken from us to unlearn all that we have been able to teach them of charity, mercy, and patience. We women of one country will be too tender of those of another country to allow our sons to be trained to injure theirs. Wow, that's a lot for Mother's Day. Of course, Mother's Day, as we know it now, observed on the second Sunday in May, has its origins with a lady named Anna Jarvis, who had a very different reason for um, honoring mothers. Never a mother herself, she spent most of her adult life caring for her mother, in Grafton, West Virginia. Her concern was for mothers who needed care and whose ch uh, adult children were neglecting them. And out of this interest, in 1905, Anna Jarvis started a campaign for an annual religious celebration honoring mothers. And in 1914, Congress passed a resolution providing that the second Sunday in May be designed, designated as Mother's Day and President Woodrow Wilson issued a Mother's Day proclamation. Now, Anna Jarvis has envisioned Mother's Day as a time of recommitment to honoring and caring for mothers, especially mothers who were no longer able to care for themselves. But she was dismayed to see the way the holiday began being celebrated. She lived to see Mother's Day become a victim of commercialization when honoring mothers was reduced to giving flowers, cards, and gifts. And that Anna Jarvis died in 1948. She was destitute, disappointed, disillusioned that her work had been so trivialized. But Mother's Day need not be trivialized. It can be and should be more than a hallmark moment. And for that matter, I will propose a slightly heretical idea that it should not be relegated to a celebration of those who have given birth. An awful lot of news reports attest that the ability to breed does not necessarily qualify someone to be a mother. On the other hand, one of the, uh, some of the finest mothering I've ever seen has come from people, both male and female, who've never had children of their own. They provide encouragement to the dejected, fortitude to those faint-hearted, applause to those who need accomplishment, and whenever needed, a shoulder to cry on. Because you see, we Presbyterians, when we baptize our children, we all make a statement that we will be there to help the parents raise their children. We all become parents each time we do that. The moms to which I refer of both genders take this promise seriously. It's their contribution that deserves grateful recognition of this on any Mother's Day. I was intrigued to see that our text lent themselves to this view of mothering, or more correctly, par parenting. There is something about this prayer from John's Gospel that sounds an awful lot like a mom giving a prayer. The scene is in the upper room. Jesus had spent this night prior to his arrest encouraging the 12 people. He had washed their feet, giving them a lesson in humility. 
He had shared a bit about the future. My father's house, there are many dwelling places. I go to prepare a place for you. He talked about their connectedness. I am the vine, you are the branches. There was that instruction to, quote, love one another. And it was going to take that mutual support to withstand the trials and tribulations that were about to come. Needless to say, they could not envision what their master was describing, but Jesus knew there would be tough times ahead and he would not be there physically with them to ensure their safety. They would be on their own. And mothers know that feeling. Fathers too. Even though it is now many years, I can still remember the very first time I saw my son Michael toddle off by himself to play with another child. He, uh, we were at the city uh, park, and we'd been playing together. Up to that time, his whole world was playing with us, with mom and dad. And he never took his eyes off of us or was out of our presence. And then all of a sudden, we look up, and Michael's eye had caught uh, the attention of some other little playmate. And he got up, and he scampered on those little legs just as fast as they could take him. None of the usual reluctance to let mommy and daddy out of sight. And as I watched him go, I knew this was a special moment. This was something different. I watched him go, and I knew it was just the beginning, the beginning of letting go. And then it happens, it repeats over and over again. The first day of kindergarten, remember that? When you let somebody else, some lady usually, take your child? That is, that is tough. That is. We had a daycare center in the previous uh, church that I served, and on the uh, first day when the kindergartners would come in, whew, it's almost like we needed a prayer service. It was so tough for, for moms and dads, but, but it does happen. And then we see it when we unload a car at a college dorm and you get all that stuff out and all of a sudden he or she is living in a room with other people and not at your house. And you've got to say goodbye and get back in that car. And how about that moment when you walk her down the aisle? And you say to the young man, take care of her. Yeah, it's tough. But Jesus' prayer that I read is a prayer of a parent, letting go of a child. Listen to some of the words again and hear how a parent might say it. There's quite a few of these. We're going to go back and forth. Jesus says, I made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. A mom says... I have tried to teach them properly. Jesus says, they were yours and you gave them to me. Mom says, yes, I know that my children belong to God, not me, but I know that they have been entrusted to me to be brought up properly. Jesus says, they know that everything you have given me is from you. And mom says, they have learned their lessons well. Jesus says, I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. And mom says, yes, I could pray some general prayer, but this is very specific, and it is for my kids, the ones whose welfare you entrusted to me. Jesus says, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them. And mom says, Lord, I am not going to be there to protect them, so you please be there to protect them. Jesus says, so that they may be one as we are one. And mom says, and never let them forget that they are family. Jesus says, and I speak those things in the world, for they must have my joy made complete in themselves. And mom says, let them be happy. Jesus says, I'm not, make, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. Mom says, I'm not asking for any special magical treatment for them. Jesus says, I ask you to protect them from the evil one. And mom says, the drugs, the booze, the sex, and yes, the greed, the pride, the selfishness, all the ways that evil can invade and ruin a life. Oh God, help my babies. Jesus says, they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And mom says, I never raise them to the standards with which the world is comfortable. I raise them by your standards. Help them to stay different based on the sure and certain knowledge that what they have learned long ago is true. Finally, Jesus says, as you have sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. Mom says, there was a time I left the nest 
Now it is their turn. Take care of them. All of these part of the prayers that parents can, uh, can share for their children, that Jesus shared for us. It isn't easy being a parent. It's, uh, I, I make, we make no illusions of it. We'd make this uh, a beautiful holiday and, we, you know, Mother's Day, and we forget all of the tough times and the times when you looked at them and wondered if they had been alien monsters that had been accidentally left uh, for you. One mo mother of three absolutely notorious youngsters was asked whether or not she'd have children uh, if, she had, if she was able to do it over again, would she have children? And she said, yes, but not these. <laughs> yeah, but another little boy uh, took a little different slant when uh, he was in a Sunday school presentation and his mother was in the front row and she was prompting him and she gestured and formed the words silently with her lips, but it did not help. Her son's memory just went blank. And finally, she leaned forward and whispered the Q, letter, the Q words he was supposed to say, I am the light of the world. And the child beamed, and with a great feeling and a loud, clear voice, he said, My mother is the light of the world. <laughs> some of us feel like that. <laughs> Not everybody, but some do. But I think there's something that we pause on a day like this, and we give thanks. We give thanks for the mothers that served uh, the Lord in such a powerful way, raising their children as well as they could. And then for those children who, when they left and came back and left and came back and left and came back, and you know what I'm talking about, yeah, that Jesus was with them and continues to be with them all the time. Because moms, while you pray for your children, your children are praying for you. The Bible says so. Let me ask you this, though. As you pray for your children and your children in your extended family, do you pray for the children of this community as well? I hope so. Good, good moms do that. That's what they're like. They never, ever entirely let go, just like Jesus. And that is good news. Happy Mother's Day. Let us pray. Our Father, we are... So thankful for mom. Moms in, of all forms and kinds and shapes and sizes and genders and all those relationships, you give us these abilities within us to care and nurture for children. And today is a day to recognize that and celebrate that. Truly, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And moms are just that important. And so we honor them today. And we hear this prayer of Jesus, and we realize that as he prayed for his disciples, he prays for us, and we pray for our children, just as he did. So hear us in our prayers. Hear us as we lift up these precious uh, beings that you put into our care, and the precious children of this community. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give to God now our tithes and our offerings.
please join me in an offertory prayer. O oh God, you have poured out upon your people in this place the riches of your grace. Help us to share these riches. Bless what we offer here today on these plates and within our hearts. May it all be worthy of us and of what you have done for us. We ask it in the name of Christ Jesus, our brother and our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I have several um, or a couple of people to lift up in prayers for you. Um, uh, Lori Grizzard has requested prayers for some upcoming tests and procedures and uh, that, uh, for a good outcome for those. And uh, Ann Perdue this uh, past week said um, goodbye temporarily to her husband of 13 years. Ed Perdue passed away after a long illness and uh, some time spent at hospice. He was surrounded by his family, and as he took his last breath, they were listening to hymns, and the hymn that was on was Battle in the Republic, which for Ed is one of his very favorites, and it just seemed to be a perfect way to, uh, to en enter into that new kingdom that God has prepared for him. Um, it's going to be a, a celebration of his life. Uh, it'll be sometime in early June, like 6th, 7th, and 8th. We're not sure yet because we're waiting for the opening at the National Cemetery uh, in Edgewater. They'll have to tell us when it is that uh, he'll have his slot, and then we'll adjust everything after that. So we'll know something the next few days uh, of when the service will be, but it'll be in that general three-day time frame. 
Uh, so please keep Anne in your prayer. She is up in uh, North Carolina, a, a long planned trip to uh, celebrate a birthday for her 98 year old mother. Yeah, and so uh, it's a real, really great thrill that she could go up there, but uh, for a long time looked like it was gonna be able to happen. So she went up and she says, I, I can use a couple of days just away. And so keep her in your prayers as she deals with all of this. Are there others that we can lift up in prayers today? Lee, Lee Caldern. Codrington, Lee Codrington. Yeah. Carolyn Peters. Okay, good. Okay, Carolyn Peters came out of the hospital. Um, okay, thank you. Susan is our church uh, parish nurse, and she has been so helpful traveling between people who need special attention, particularly medical attention, and uh, Susan, thank you for that. And you do such a fabulous job. But when you give these announcements, you need to do it louder. <laughs> You're soft-spokenness. And uh, we appreciate it very much. I, I saw how you took care of Ed um, personally, and that was, was wonderful. Thank you so much for that ministry that you do. Let's go uh, to God in prayer. Today, oh God, as we celebrate Mother's Day and lift up the Christian home, we are filled with a variety of feelings, emotions, and memories. We give you thanks for the tender times when our mothers and fathers have mirrored your love for us. We remember them driving us to ball games and scouts, encouraging us with our homework, putting bandages on skinned knees, hugging our hurt pride, waiting up for us to come home at night, we remember those ordinary, everyday expressions of love and our hearts are warmed. But there is also a time for painful memories of families torn apart, of family members losing their way, of separation and divorce, of couples unable to have children, of loneliness in the midst of many. And we remember with sadness those parents no longer with us where perhaps there was so much more we would have wanted to say. We ask, loving God, that you would ease our hurtful family memories and restore us to a sense of your love. For we, we are your children, your chosen ones. No matter what our family situation, we give thanks for our special place in your family. Continue to hold us in your tender embrace. For the times that we have failed to cherish and use the gifts you have given to each of us, we ask your forgiveness. For the times we have failed to encourage the gifts and growth of others close to us, we ask your forgiveness. Guide us, loving parent, that we might live as your children, full of the awe and wonder of all that life offers. And so on this morning, we lift our prayers, first of all, for all mothers and fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, sisters and brothers, we especially celebrate new parents who are just beginning a journey of love. We lift prayers for those who are hurting, who suffer with illness, who struggle with hard decisions, who grieve losses and past memories, who are confused about what to do next with their lives. We lift prayers for families who face loss. We lift prayers for the leaders of our country that they might support those things that strengthen and uphold families. But mostly we ask your help, O oh God, in committing ourselves anew to living out the sort of unconditional love within our families that makes real the meaning of your steadfast and abundant love for us. Hear us now as we join our voices together in the great prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver it from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please, let's stand and sing. <clears throat>
before you leave this place, take some time to greet those who've been worshiping with you on your pew and welcome them in the name of Jesus Christ. It is Mother's Day, so we have a lot of guests with us. Moms who brought their kids, kids who brought their moms. Uh, I wish I could bring my mom. She would love you all so much. And she really would have brought a casserole. Uh, she, she, she was the casserole king, uh, queen of every church she ever attended. Um, and speaking of casseroles, we're not having one today, but we're going to go over to the fellowship hall and have lunch. And it's delicious. I, I smelled, I was here yesterday and it just drove me nuts because I, I can smell it right down the hallway. And uh, if you think that you're going to find a seat anywhere in town, anyway, you're going to be mistaken. There, the thing's going to be full, but we got plenty of food and plenty of room. And uh, actually, we have good fellowship. So um, that's even better than going to someplace else. So you're all welcome to uh, come and be a part of that and enjoy it. And uh, get a chance to know some other people as well while you do that. So now that we are... Oh, yeah, that's right. We have a, a Tim to play, don't we? I am so used to this. How about y'all sit down? <laughs> Thank you. Remember what I said before? <laughs> All that again. So um, look forward to seeing you over in fellowship. And uh, if you can, call your mom. Call your mom. Okay? Do that. Do it. Um, and now, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we now go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as the people of God, the body of Christ. May God Almighty enfold you before and after in your known way and out of your known way, where Christ waits with outstretched arms and angels sing. Amen.